And good evening, Montana. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Quartz with this evening's 10 at 10. The Montana Grizzly football team returned to normal in 2013 after what was considered a lackluster 2012 season. The Grizz are looking to build on last year's excellent 10 and 3 record that included a return to the playoffs. And a big part of that is now senior QB Jordan Johnson, who had 32 touchdowns in 2013 after not playing the year before. The Grizz football team holding their first practice in full pads today. The weather and the competition was easy with a few skirmishes taking place between the offensive and defensive units. It was also the last one-a-day practice before two-a-days begin tomorrow. The second practice tomorrow night will be a controlled practice with some live hitting. Defensive coordinator Ty Gregorak, who was joined by his daughter Gabby, talked about what they want to see from the players when the pads are put on. In these in these padded practices, even if it's not live tempo, even if the even if it's not scrimmage tempo, I want to see us practicing our tackling. We got to become a great tackling defense. We work it every day. I expect us to be a more consistent a consistent tackling defense this year, and that's what I want to see when we when we put on pads. And to some, seven and five is considered a good season. It is, after all, a winning record but not to the Montana State Bobcats after the disappointing end to their 2013 season. Redemption will definitely be on the minds of the returning Bobcats in 2014. Lots of competition with several positions open, including at quarterback. The team practicing in Bobcat Stadium in front of fans for the first time this fall or early on in the scrimmage. Quarterback Jake Bleskin, who seems to be the favorite for starter right now, moves left and waits before hitting Will Krolik in stride. Krolik was knocked out of bounds just before the goal line. But a nice play to say the least. Minutes later, offense still at work. Redshirt freshman QB Quinn McQuarrie to Bozeman native John Diagostino on the deep ball. Vertical passing game looking strong early. Next, the defense steps up. Freshman defensive end Garrett Marino makes a stop in the backfield, taking down sophomore QB Dakota Prukop. And then the hitting picked up as Deontay Flowers, welcome to the Terror Dome, lays a shoulder into the receiver Brian Blotketter. But later, the offense back to work as McQuarrie goes deep once again, this time to freshman Justin Page, who makes the beautiful diving grab down at the 10-yard line. And now more defense, the inside run going nowhere as the third-team defense makes the gang tackle at the line of scrimmage. Finally, the day was capped off with Bleskin back at quarterback, and he steps up in the pocket, throws it deep to Page once again, and the Katy, Texas native, dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Here's more from today's scrimmage. Defense really did a great job stopping the run. Uh, offense had some big explosive plays, and so there were some good things on both sides of the ball, which you always get early in the season. But the big thing was we got after it and, and really got a chance to tackle and get some good plays on film. The Missoula Mavericks double-A team saw their season come to an unfortunate end in the Northwest Region Tournament. The Mavs were defeated in losers bracket action today by Waipahu, Hawaii by a score of 16 to 12. The Mavs were led by Shane Olson, who was one for four with three runs batted in in this slugfest. Hawaii added to the slugfest though as each person in the batting order recorded at least one hit and a nine run fourth inning aided them in victory. The Mavs tried everything they could to scratch and claw their way back but the hold to get out of was just too big. And the Osprey in Idaho Falls this evening, and the Chuckers bats were alive in this one. We're in the top of the seventh right now, and Idaho Falls led 10-5. Dallas Newton chased in the fourth inning after allowing eight earned runs. Luis Valenzuela was three of four, only a home run shy up to the cycle up to that point. Stewart Ijams, the bright spot for the O's is he had a three-run homer in the first, but it has been all Chuckers since. These two teams will meet again tomorrow at 4 p.m. Zootown All-Stars representing Missoula, Montana, playing in the Senior League World Series against South Bend, Indiana. Things going well early on. Macy Newberry unhittable once again with the swing and the miss. She had 15 Ks yesterday and came out on fire. In the third now, she's going to get the check swing strikeout. Game is still scoreless up to that point. Top of the fourth and the best chance for Missoula to put some runs on the board, but South Bend gets the ground out to the pitcher to get out of the jam. No runs doing there. Bottom of the fourth now in the pitch from Newberry. This one's going to get away, and a run is going to score. Indiana up 1-0. And then in the fifth, Indiana playing small ball, laying down the bunt. They would do this throughout the game, and it would work, and the defense struggled to make the correct outs. Indiana goes on to win 5-0, but a heck of a ride for the Zootown squad, and they should be very proud. Hey, that's it for sports. Meteorologist Adam Coslin has a look at your forecast on the other side of the break.